So Adam Grant says, See, every experience as an opportunity, I would say even an invitation by the universe, by God, by Mother Nature, by mankind, whatever you want to call it, see it as an invitation to help people to be of service. And this will, it's the, it's the people that get out there and they're constantly doing that have that fulfillment. And eventually, you stack enough of those together and bigger sweeping changes will start happening. All right, welcome back to another video, everyone. So today's topic is the lost art of being of service, okay? Why you must see every interaction as the opportunity to help someone. So in one of his spectacular books, I can't remember exactly which one it was in, maybe in multiple of them actually, um, the author Adam Grant says, and I'm paraphrasing, but you must see every interaction as an opportunity to help people. And I say, I entitled this one The Lost Art, right? <laughs> of being of service. So this is related to a couple of the other videos that I have on the subject of not just uh, being of service necessarily, but I did one on why you may need more work, uh, why you may need to be doing a little bit more. And that doesn't necessarily, work doesn't necessarily mean that you need to pick up more hours at work. But for a lot of you, that, that's absolutely what it means. But it means that you need to be busy more often. If you find yourself scrolling through TikTok or social media or the news or any of those things a lot and you're just sitting there hour after hour in your free time, you may need more work. Um, and one of those ways, I have a whole video on that, so you can check that out too. One of those ways is being of service, finding ways to help people when you're out doing whatever, whether you're at work, whether you're at the grocery store, whatever the case might be. And this is important because it's, when I say it's a lost art is with, uh, with the hustle and bustle of everyday life and today's world, we often think in terms of just what's in it for me. How can I get my responsibilities over with for the day as quickly as possible so that I might, I don't know, have more free time. The, the, the unfortunate thing is free time, in a way, like, I don't want to say damages, if, if it doesn't damage per, uh, permanently, let's say damages, damages the soul, let's say dampens the soul, that's probably better, <laughs> all right? dampens the soul you don't want a damp soul because then you're feeling like you never want to get out of bed like oh there's nothing to do or oh i'm so bored if you're feeling like those things you probably need more work and this video being of service or the lost art of being of service is one of those things especially as a now i don't want to get too far in the binary thinking of males and females, gentlemen and ladies, but if you're a man, especially, and you're not being of service, there's something strange. It's almost like you're genetically programmed to find a certain joy in being of service. So if you're always going to work and trying to get off as soon as you can, trying to uh, do the least amount of whatever, being on teams and doing the easiest job. You guys remember back in like high school, maybe even college, hopefully by the time college rolls around, people will have ironed this out a little bit, but you probably will know what I'm talking about. Back in school, when they would give you group projects and you would have that one person that's like, oh, I just wanna do, I don't know, this thing, like record what uh, everybody, uh, the ideas that everyone else comes up with, right, or, be the, the the timer or something like you if somebody has to give a presentation it's like oh i'll be the person that times you they want to do the easiest thing is basically what i'm saying or i'll j i'll give you the feedback but they don't want to come up with the ideas they don't want to brainstorm they don't want to be the one in front of the room presenting they don't want to x y and z you already know what i'm talking about okay this selfish person who basically wants to do the least amount of work possible and is always looking for that. And then if, if that's you, 
and you are dissatisfied with life, if you are finding that generally every day you get up, it's just nothing's ever good, you, you see the next best thing, you're like, okay, that's going to make me happy, and it doesn't, this is a good component to helping get out of that. This, I would say, is a good component to helping ease the the signs, the symptoms of depression. If you have that, if you seem like you're depressed, you're like, man, nothing I ever do really scratches that itch anymore. Okay? You see what I'm saying? So, it, this is a good one. Being of service. Now, like I said, especially if you're a man, for hundreds of years, that has been what being a gentleman was about. Now, you can absolutely apply this to yourself if you want to be like a lady or a, a, or a woman who is has impact right on society, on people around them. It means the same thing. I'm not trying to, like I said, get into the binary male and female and the gender roles here. But what I am saying is like a, a lot of men will find themselves in a rut with no course so let's get to some course correction here. Being of service is one of those things that can help. If, if, if nothing else, it will make you feel, it will make you feel good. So you can do it for that selfish reason. It'll make you, it will make you feel good if you are decent and start looking for ways to help people. Let me tell you guys a quick story, okay? This is not intended to toot my own horn or anything. This is this is just an example, one of many that I could share. But so I was at the the grocery store not that long ago. And it was at night. This was right after I had gotten off work. It was like a 10-hour day or whatever it was. It, it was a it was a day. Right? It was a day of work and grocery store was still open. So I went and on the way in I saw that these uh, these people were getting out jumper cables and it looked like they were going to help somebody else uh, jump their car. So I go in, I spend five or ten minutes or whatever it is in the grocery store, I come out and they're still out there. And it, it, this is, this is, it's nighttime by the way, it looks like it's about to rain, it's like, like I said, I had already had a full day ready to get home and so... I was I was standing there I was like because because I know how to jump a car a lot of people don't which is fine which might actually have to do with what we're talking about right here a lot of people don't know how to jump cars not because they're stupid not because they're um not car savvy or tech savvy or any of that they might be but most of the time that's not what it is it's a question of motivation it's what we're talking about right here being of service when you jump cars, half the time it ain't even your own. So that is being of service to somebody else. And for some reason, in the past 20, 30, 40 years, uh, whatever it's been, I, I don't know exactly what it's been, but this has become a lost art of, hey, you need to know this because you might need to help someone else. And it might not just be a stranger, it might be somebody that you know. Anyways, they were having trouble with it. Maybe they didn't know how to do it. So I was like, I know how to do it. So let's, uh, I'm going let me just go ahead and ask them and see if they need some help. It won't take me, but a few minutes because if there's an issue that is not that, because someone's car isn't starting, that could be a variety of issues, obviously. If it's an issue that's not that, they're going to have to call somebody to help with that. It is not something that I can do, especially without uh, a shop and tools and you see what I'm saying? It's like, oh, you need a you need a new fuel pump or something. I'm not just going to open my trunk and it's like, hey, man, I got one right here. Let's get to work on this thing. <laughs> you see what I mean? So, but I was like, but most of the time it's a, it's an electrical issue like that, like a battery or something. So I went over to them. I asked them. I was like, hey, do you guys need any help jumping this car? And they were like, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're not sure. It's not, it's not working. We're not sure how to do it. So long story short, I showed them how to do it. We got them started. They were, I, I, they may have been attaching the cables wrong. I don't know exactly what it was then, but we got them started. Then they were really happy. See, and of course that made me feel good, but the, the better thing is think about the, not just like, ooh, I know what to do 
and I'm so great because I know what to do. It's not just that that kind of it's not just that kind of situation. It's also the fact that think of the anxiety that you immediately will help relieve when you do something like that. Their car starts and at least they can get away from the grocery store and get somewhere that's, I don't know, their home or their friend's house or somewhere where they'd rather have their car and then they can uh, go inside and not be outside. Like I said, it was going to start raining and this is what I'm talking about. A lot of people, in fact, I guess everybody else who was at the grocery store at the time weren't being of service. They didn't stop to ask. Now, some of that, like I said, is a question of motivation. Some people are just shy, and I get that. I understand. I've been a shy person for a lot of my life, and I understand what it's like. But you also have to remember, if you have that expertise, don't be shy about it, if you know what you're talking about, because they're not going to be thinking, oh, who is this person who thinks that they're the shit because they can jump a car? They're going to be like, thank God, you know, it's about to rain. We've been out here 10, 15 minutes already trying this thing. We're not sure if our car will start. That's what they're going to be thinking. They're not going to be thinking about how, how, oh, who is this person coming up or whatever it is that people are shy about, right? Don't be so uh, egotistic to think the world revolves around you and that people are even going to be thinking about that, especially in this mini crisis of theirs. So this is what I'm talking about. Being of service is a lost art. So when I say that it will help with the symptoms of depression, uh, it will, because it will make you happy just immediately, just because you did something. But it's not just the, oh, I helped somebody, that makes me happy. It is that, and that's great. But it's also the fact that you're able to have impact on your world, if ever small, even if it's small. You're still able to have impact on your world. A One of the major reasons that you that anyone experiences depression, especially the kind that sticks around, you're going to be depressed if something happens to you that sucks okay like if you get hit by a car or something your life is about to get a hell of a lot worse yeah so you're gonna have a bit of depression we don't want to talk about all the things right and and start being sad or you know if you don't get a if you don't get a a raise or something at work or that promotion you've been looking for yeah you're gonna be depressed probably for a few hours maybe a couple of days but if it lingers and you're still thinking about that crap six months down the road, you may not even be aware you're thinking of it, but that's still a contributing factor to this depression you just can't really squash. These acts of service will help in this way because all the little things that together contribute to your depression, they tumble, right? They, they get easier and easier to stack up but you can stack the dip the other way. And being of service, it's not just about making people happy, but it's the fact that your brain can see that you are stacking in that positive direction. Does that make sense? So this is one reason I would say being of service is hugely beneficial to your psyche, to your quality of life. So Adam Grant says, see every opportunity as a, as a, oppor see every experience as an opportunity. I would say even an invitation by the universe, by God, by mother nature, by mankind, whatever you want to call it. See it as an invitation to help people to be of service. And this will, it's the, it's the people that get out there and they're constantly doing that have that fulfillment and eventually you stack enough of those together and bigger sweeping changes will start happening it's worth it just for the happiness and fulfillment that you will start to experience but there's sort of a magical thing about it too there are fringe benefits that you don't quite uh you won't be quite aware of from the beginning that it's not it's not that you're doing it that oh maybe this person will help me with something yeah maybe they will that's called the law of reciprocity 
the reciprocity bias, okay? They probably will. Or it'll come back to you in some sort of karmic way or whatever. However, it will come back, though. But it isn't just that. It's the fact that over time it compounds. So not will you get rewarded for each little thing you do, and you won't necessarily at the time for each little thing that you do. That's what, that's what they call pay it forward. Because this is about training your mind with optimism. Even if it wasn't true, even if it wasn't true that it would come back for you. If you just believe that though, you're still going to have a better life. And it is true. There is some magical thing out there. Whatever you want to call it. Karma, destiny, <laughs> uh, the law of reciprocity. That if you are the kind of person that gives off that energy that, hey, I'm being of service. I'm keeping active things will start to come to you and they will be bigger things than what you put out because they'll compound. Y'all know what com compounding is? That means that when you add something together over and over and over, it's, it becomes greater than the sum of its parts. So one plus one plus one isn't just three. If you do one instance of being of service and then another and then another what comes to you isn't necessarily three instances it'd be three and a half or four if you see what i'm saying uh in intensity at least it could be one instance but hugely intense you help three people jump their car and just because of the energy that you exude and the kind you the kind of person that you're becoming maybe somebody will help you fix your damn car maybe you have the fuel pump issue and they're like you know something it's the damnedest thing, but I, uh, I have a fuel pump for that exact car. Or maybe it's, maybe your battery is just completely shot. Maybe those people's battery, the three people you helped, they got worn down because they're bumping their music too loud. They got their headlights on, they got the air condition blasting, and they didn't drive around enough. And so it wore the battery down, but the battery is fine. You charge it and it's cool three times. But the time it happens to you, you need a new battery. And maybe, maybe somebody just has one how much do batteries cost between one and two hundred dollars maybe a little bit more than that so do you see how even in one instance that you get all that back the intensity is higher and obviously it might not be that it might be something else in your life this is just an example but this is why being of service is a lost art and it shouldn't be people are so afraid of a little bit of work you should be looking to do the most work. You shouldn't be one of those people in, in, in high school who's like, Damn, man, I don't think, I don't want to get up in front of the class, man. I don't want to do the project. <laughs> right? I, I just want to sit here and um, I'll record what everyone says. Hey, the recorder is important, but that you, you shouldn't be the person that is always trying to do the easiest thing. Right? And and those people are always so impressed with themselves. Like, yeah, yeah, I recorded. And really, they didn't do any work. I think, I hope I'm getting this right. I think the comedian um, Jeff Foxworthy has <laughs> said one time, that, and he said this about men and women, okay? This doesn't necessarily have to do with men and women, although it might be. But this is in pe people in general. But this is about... But his joke was about men and women. He says that men are more impressed with their 1% of effort than women are with their 99%. Now take that and, and just, just apply it to just people in general. There are lazy men and women. There are, la there are hardworking men and women, obviously. And he's like, so your wife will be out there repaving the driveway with new asphalt or tarmac or whatever it is. Like, she's out there slaving, repaving the driveway. <laughs> and he, as the man, you'll come up there and be like, listen, honey, don't worry about emptying out that ashtray. I got it. And she's like, thanks, dear. Right? You don't want to be one of those people who are like, like, like I said, in grade school, want to do the easiest thing. You want to look for more intense things to do and do them in a aggressively helpful way, right? Look for that being of service. It's an opportunity. It's an invitation from the universe. They're like, this is right here. How I don't know, I don't know how everyone misses it. This is right here. How you get a little bit farther. How 
And people will like you more, too. If you do this around the office, that doesn't mean you need to be a person people walk all over. This doesn't mean be an idiot, okay? But you don't want to have that at the front, like, okay, nobody is going to trick me. No one's going to make me do more work. No one's going to be... If it means that much to you, you're doing it wrong. You don't... You probably know the one or two people at work that are, like, hyper lazy. Just don't do that much stuff for them. But still, just be of service as often as you can. Just don't care. You shouldn't give a shit about people. Even if someone's like, God, this person is an idiot because they, they'll just do all the work. Their shitty life is going to be their reward for having that attitude. Don't worry. Their life is shit. Okay? <laughs> Yours isn't going to be. So, this talk, man, it's been all about being of service. The lost art of being of service. There's plenty more to say on this topic. I might do a part two. Uh, I might extend this in some way. But this is, uh, this topic, remember, Adam Grant says, see every situation as an opportunity, and I would say invitation to help somebody. All right? So thank you all so much for being here, and have a beautiful day.